right. Welcome back to Random Rambling. This is take number two. I'm your host, Gabino Gaming, also known as your neighborhood crab man. Today we have the special guest that's been a long time coming. It's Here in the backwoods, we call him Tuesday to Don, my big bro, Fredro Stanton. Let's get it. What's up, people? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So I know you see the dirty thing he's wearing on his chest and on his hat. Um, God, the disrespect is outrageous. Um, so yeah, my older brother, my best friend, is a Baltimore Ravens fan. And if you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I bleed black and yellow. Pittsburgh till I die. You can see it everywhere. You got TJ Watt up there, a little helmet. Yeah, that's how we get down. Um... We play the Ravens twice a year. Um, I should put my Antonio Brown CTE. jersey on. CTE. But I just wore it for my son's birthday party. But Did you? I did. I wore it. It smells like got, grilled food. It got, I wore it while I was on the floor. <laughs> I, I got to take it off. This is too much. It it's smells too like hot. grilled food. Um, I've been wanting to have my bro on the pod for a long time. And That's I know right. if you're seeing this, you're probably like, man, we got a pod, but we haven't had any new episodes. We know Madden 24. No, nothing yet. Dude, I worked 53 hours a week before last, and I was supposed to work 44 last week. So I've been a busy man, plus school. Just just, just be, 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 be patient with me because the videos are coming back. I got Madden 24. We're going to continue the AEW series, and when 2K24 comes out, we'll do a new rebuild with them. But when the opportunity arises... I got to record the random rambling. It's been a while, and we have another guest on the show. We're trying to get more. Maybe Josh will show up for a wrestling uh, pod in the future. We've talked about it in the past. But, everybody, welcome my big brother to the pod. How goes it? How goes it? I'm good, bro. Just, you know, living the dream. You know, it's not too far-fetched if you really think about it. I just want to take a moment to shout you out. Those 53 hours a week, you're able to have this beautiful setup for your your subscribers and more importantly, your family. So shout out to Joey. Let's give him a round of applause or Gambino, the king, whatever y'all call him on this beautiful podcast he has. Yeah, bro, I'm blessed, man. I can't I can't find anything to complain about. You know, I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm happy it's football season, man. Let's go <laughs> it's boys. like it's like I got a second income coming through because, you know, I'm a I'm a connoisseur. I'm a I'm a be on the sports book app, my Fredo Stanton. If you need some picks, hit my Instagram at Fredo Stanton. I'll have daily picks every week so if you need that. Let's go I got you talk set about up. The Baltimore Ravens. Let's do it. So, how many games are you projecting? Baltimore Ravens to win. Because I saw a post on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I think it had you guys at 12 wins. Mm. Pittsburgh at 10. Baltimore, I mean, Cincinnati at like 14. And mm. I think they had the Browns at like 8 and 9. And the, the reasoning behind it was just it's still the Browns. It's just the Browns. Just getting adjusted. Um, so y'all open up with a W. With Texans. The Texans. Right. Then y'all play the Bengals. At in the second Bengals. week, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Cincy. And Cincy. By week two, we're hoping Joe Burrow is probably fully healthy because we don't want no demise. When you anybody. say we, you mean like fans, yeah, like yeah, you right. guys that are not Baltimore Ravens, yeah, yeah. fans. Everybody okay, because because be absolutely, stuff. most certainly, most certainly, and I love Joe Burrow, which Joe makes Shasty. it yeah, absolutely, which makes it really conflicting being a Ravens fan because I want to see Joe Burrow do good. I was, you know, really hurt that he got hurt because I felt like it took away from the preparation and you can't con- you can't proclaim to be the best until you beat the best. Yeah. Shout out to my boy Rick Flair. Um, my homes is um I mean they I think they're two and O regular season, but mm-hmm. when it comes down to the playoffs, Patty and the boys just got the the Bengals numbers. Yeah. Let's circle back to the playoffs since you brought up the playoffs okay. because me and my big bro, shout out to Mr. Antlope, uh VA's finest. Let's uh me and him was talking this morning about the Bengals and he thinks that they're they're significantly better than the Ravens like not like because of their skill position. He just thinks that they're just a better outright team. And I told him based off what we seen last year, more specifically the playoffs, we had Tyler Huntley. Shout out to Tyler Huntley. He's yeah. not Lamar Jackson. No. He's not even Robert Griffin the third. He's not even Robert Griffin the third. Thank you, thank you, Joe. Uh, 
But he held it down for y'all. That's what I'm saying. So he held it down, right? Granted, as much fault of it I will give to him, I'm going to have to turn back around and give it to the coaching staff because Harbaugh should have knew better than having five foot. However, if you're five foot, you shouldn't be diving at the goal line. I don't With care. All in front of you like this, without any kind of protection. I mean, you gotta think. I was trying to explain to him, like, bro, we lost with our second string quarterback against the number one team in. In the, in the division, and, I mean, they're the second-best team in the conference behind yeah. the Chiefs. I yeah. mean, not because that's my opinion. Statistically, yeah. what the record shows, let the record show, the you know what I'm saying? And uh, he held it down for us, right? Bro, who should have won that game? The Ravens should have We should have won. We were on the one-yard line. It was a bad play call. It was a terrible play call. Why are you having your very small quarterback – Lead with the ball against a defense that has been known to be very spectacular on the line. On the line, and for a, f- no, he's not a rookie, but in those types of situations, a he's got a, it's a, that's a rookie mistake, bro. Yeah. That's a rookie mistake, first of all. Was it third down? Or was it bro, I think it was second down, dude. It, you had to take that time to, to backtrack to, hmm, Seahawks had. Marshawn Lynch. I'm so glad you brought that up. And we throw the ball into double coverage and lose the Super Bowl. And the funny thing is, let's backtrack to that, is they just had a Corona commercial. I don't know if you saw it, but it had Marshawn Lynch and some guy sitting on some lawn chairs on the beach. And the guy's like, hey, can I get a beer? And he's like, hey, just give me the beer. I'll walk out over there to him. He's like, no, no, I I can throw it to him here. And long story short, he throws the beer. The guy misses, lands on the beer, catches his (laughs) arm on fire. (laughs) Should have ran it. <laughs> Should have just gave the ball to Marshawn. Should have just gave it to Marshawn. That'll be something that the Seahawks will never be able to live down for. Marshawn Lynch though. is still never. He's never forgiven Pete okay. Carroll, and and he's never forgiven Russell West. Uh, West Russell Wilson, excuse me. And you're like, well, why is he have, holding a grudge against Russell Wilson? You have to understand, people. Guy, Russell Wilson. Horrible. That's when I'm. When you're the man, you audible. Hardball. Lamar, you want to go for two? Why did he ask Lamar that? Because Lamar is the man. The, the coaches, the coach spends the Monday chair. through Thursday doing walk on, doing walkthroughs, and all the stuff. And on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, leading up to the game, he leaves it all to the players for rest and all that preparation to come into play when it's time to call the play. Yeah. Like if Pete Carroll said. All right, we're going to throw it on the one-yard line. There's no way Malcolm Butler is going to intercept it. Being the diva, and and, and, and this is important because Russell Wilson, the reason why no one is missing Russell in Seattle is because of the role he played in Seattle. He was a diva for one. Mm -hmm. Didn't even eat lunch with his offensive line. What kind of quarterback going to eat lunch with his line? Have you seen the impact he had on uh, Denver last year, having to have his own area for his own locker room and bringing his own uh, people in? And uh, which McCall said that's not Sean gonna, Payton said that's, that's, that's just not fly. flying this it's year. Not fly. It's not flying this year. Carroll can't say that because he's 978 years old. Sean Payton has been known to be a hard tip kind of coach for as long as he's been in the league. Well, you know – Sean Payton's had many successful seasons, and if yeah. you're going to follow, and you have one of the greatest of all time, and Drew Brees, that was a missile down the field. And let's not look. Russell Russell Wilson and Drew Brees have some of the same attributes. I mean, their size is pretty much virtually identical. They're both five foot eight, nine, ten, ten and some change, and they're about two hundred pounds. Yeah, and um, I think they both have slingers. Arm. Drew Brees has a better arm. He was more accurate. But, but whenever the play breaks down, Russell Wilson's that guy yeah. that can extend the play. Yeah. Like when a play should only last for four seconds, he can make that play last for 12, 12 yeah. seconds, bro. Yeah. yeah. One of the most great things that I've ever seen Russell Wilson do was throw that sideline just dart to Tyler Lockett in the end zone <laughs> on the side. Let's take a time out to put some appreciation on Tyler Lockett's name because I swear that guy does not get enough he respect. Don't. He really because don't. Because they have DK Metcalf, which is a freaking cheat code, a Madden-created player, but Tyler Lockett, to be the size consistent. and the, see- the speed, that guy is so consistent. He He's is consistent. a pacifier for quarterbacks. He's going to give you a 1,000 every year, every no matter year. Who, who the other guy on you the other side of him is. You can put freaking Tyler Henney out there, and Tyler Lockett's still going to give you a 1,000 yards because he's got some of the, some good hands but not only that he's got good feet yeah 
He's, he's gonna stay got, in bounds. He's got. He's, he's gonna stay up. Yeah, and he's got great agility. That yeah. man is quick, fast, and can cut. But you gotta think why Tyler Lockett doesn't get the praise he get. You get. You got the. You got the the Tyreek Hills. Yeah. You got the Devonte Adams. Yeah. You got the. Uh, he could be a wide receiver one on any other team. I mean, I'm gonna say a name that some people probably you'll know this name in the next couple of seasons. Amon Ron Amon Saint Brown. Dude, I was torturing uh, Craig with him on. Forgive me if I uh, pronounce right. his name Amon wrong. Amon Ron Saint Brown. Yeah. He is a stud. Dog. Stud. <laughs> okay, he's a dog. He got the X-rays, <laughs> and the doctor said you got 100 percent of that dog in you. Yeah, absolutely. If they could get no hate towards Jared Goff, but the guy's kind of aged out, and that team is younger compared to how old he is in football terms. If they could get a Trevor Lawrence tier quarterback, tier godly, watch out for the Lions because their defense is going to be a good Caleb Williams, but they're not bad enough to get Caleb Williams. They're going to win. They're going to win about nine games. Nine or ten games. They're going to win about I'd nine I'd have to look games. at their record. But they yeah. haven't won double-digit games since freaking Calvin Johnson but was Jameer in his third year. But Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery are going to be a very good two-headed horse power running back duo. Mark my words. I'm talking... If David Montgomery, if DeMont don't get hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he does have a history of injury. That's probably why they didn't bring him back in Chicago. Chicago. Yes, exactly why they didn't bring him back in Chicago. Because when he was healthy, he was a workhorse. You want to know why they didn't bring him back in Chicago? Chicago's playing with cap issues right now, and they're thinking, hmm, Justin Fields is probably going to rush about 60% of the time. We're not paying DeMont because DeMont deserves to get paid. Yeah. He does deserve to get paid, too. And they do got Khalil Herbert. He's two years younger. And I think – which might bite me in the ass because I have him on one of my fantasy leagues. He's not going to run as much this year because now he has a legitimate wide receiver one. Are you talking about Chase Claypool? DJ Moore. From the Carolina Panthers. He's a legit wide receiver one. And he hasn't had a legitimate, stable quarterback as long as he's been there. Because Cam was not Cam when he came back. Gardner Minshew, Sam Darnold, the quarterbacks they've had in that quarterback room – aren't on the same level as Justin Fields can be this year. How do you since we're on the topic of Justin Fields, how do you think about Justin Is he on the hot seat? I don't think he's been given Bro, he Chris has not been given enough chances to be on the hot seat, bro. Yeah. This is his first legit chance to prove people. He so, had a legitimate wide receiver one. Darnell Mooney, who I absolutely love. Is I'm not, not high on Darnell Mooney. Mooney. He's not a wide receiver one. And you've seen what kind of impact Chase Claypool had with the Steelers. He took that to Chicago, and they already want to get rid of him. They haven't had a legitimate tight end until last year when they got Cole Komet. The Bears want to get rid of Chase Claypool? He's had um, – uh, they had a lot of issues with him during the preseason and in training camp when it comes to, like – uh, skirmishes with other players because he's uh, a diva. He's, he's another a diva. Juju Smith Schuster, a guy who wants to be the spotlight but not produce the spotlight kind of numbers. Yeah, everybody wants to be Tyreek Hill without putting up Tyreek Hill numbers. And Tyreek Hill, you would think he he would be more glamorous, but he's just. Stable. Shout out to Tyreek Hill, he's a man. Stable, dude. That man is one of the greatest, but he you would never know it because he don't demand people to respect nope. him. He's not a guy. He just like, goes out there and I just need, produces. I need, I need twenty touches a game. He's just and like, whenever I get the ball, I get the ball, and I'm going to show you why. Whatever the opposite, it. whatever opposite of shout out is, I'm going to give to the 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 Chiefs because shame on y'all, yeah. shame on y'all. That dynasty could last probably another five. You tell me, you. I mean, and you're like, well, Fredo, he just won a Super Bowl. They just won a Super Bowl without him. But that don't matter, bro. That don't matter. <laughs> the the reason why you got closer if you had Tyree Killings versus Montez Valdez Scanling. Um, Kadavius Tony and Juju Smith Schuster. You replace one of those guys with Tyreek Hill, and that that game is probably dramatically different. So, like when I put on my GM hat, like I get it. It's just like, well, we have the greatest quarterback of all time. He's going to make an average person supersede yeah. what his potential could yeah. even possibly be because yeah. he's just Sorry. that good. But I'm a Lee, right? And in my family. He might not have the last name of Lee, but he was raised as one. And in our family, loyalty is everything. When somebody gives you loyalty, you need to pay them back for it. And Tyreek Tyreek Hill didn't even ask to be the highest paid receiver in the league. He just wanted his money. He just wanted to provide for his family, bro. Or even just himself. Like, bro, like, 
when you play this game of football, you want to be compensated because you got you got OTAs in the night. People don't understand OTAs, bro. It's like 105 degrees out there, fam. It's the middle of the summer. Yeah, it's the middle of the summer, and that's why only the dogs last. That's why they invite 90 people on in the team, and only 53 of them make it. They cut 40 people, bro. Marcus Russell didn't make it. Like Biggest it's in NFL it's history. really hard to make the team, and I just feel like whenever you have a player who's done nothing but produce since day one, yeah, you gotta pay him. Yeah. Give him at least one, like give him his one contract because he's a receiver. He's not gonna be around forever. Don't you know, what I'm unless you're Randy Moss. Yeah, I'm Jerry Rice, your chef like or Jerry. R- R- yeah, your chef like, like a running back, yeah. like which is a great transition. The running back position. Look, sure. bro. Me and my son are practicing routes. We're practicing throwing. One thing we're not practicing is being a running back. Is the guy you want to know why? Respect? Because I want my son to be respected. I want my son to feel like, you know, not only to me, but to his peers, that he's worth something. The running back position Pay them boys they money. is worth nothing Pay in them the boys NFL. That money. I'm not saying the worth in production. I mean the worth in salary. Yeah. I mean, you got a player like Jonathan Taylor asking to get paid? Didn't like, what are we doing here? Here before last and still had like 1600 on an injury here? Bro, the running back position does way more than run the ball. Okay, the running back position might be the last stitch of blocking you have to make sure your quarterback don't get smashed. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And if you have a smart running back, he might call an audible on his own route yeah. to be like, oh, shoot, here comes a linebacker. Let me go ahead and get low so I can protect yeah. my quarterback. My investment. You know the what I'm saying? And, like, they run routes. They, they, they catch the ball. They block. They run. Yeah. Like, what don't they do on the football field? Yeah. And they are, like, legitimately... The last option when it comes to getting paid. Their last option when it comes to getting paid. That is Unless not Unless you're Christian okay. McCaffrey. And the only reason why Christian McCaffrey got paid is because the 49ers... Kyle Shanahan knows how to use... He's not looking at Christian McCaffrey like, oh, we just signed a running back. He's looking at the... Yeah, he's looking at Christian McCaffrey <laughs> as some... Swiss Army knife. He just multiple Swiss Army. Oh my knife. God! He can ca- first of all, the man can line up, and you'll forget that he's a running back. Yeah. Because he can run routes with the best of them. Yeah. No, I don't mean Devontae Adams. No, I don't mean Tyreek Hill. But I mean like he can get out there. Your, and your middle. Yeah, he can get out there and shake you. And not only is he fast as hell, his hands are Heart soft. Stoned. Bro, they're, they're not. Stoned. He's a soft hands. He just grabs that ball, and I mean. Uh, and he threw the ball. He threw the ball because they had no other option to throw the ball. It was either it was either it's like either uh, Christian McCaffrey threw the ball or Kyle Shanahan threw the ball. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan was not in the position to throw the ball, though. You know what I'm saying? The 49ers are in a very tough predicament because they still don't have a quarterback. Neat, my wife is high on Brock Purdy. She loves Brock Purdy. She thinks he's good. I have not. I'm not sold. Bro, I could put Joseph Keith Gamble under center and have Trent Williams to the left of him. Oh, I signed me up for that. And g- give, that give, give, give Joey 14 seconds to throw the ball. He's going to find somebody open. Yeah. Why? Because you got Debo Samuel. Yeah. You got Brandon Ayuk. Yeah. You got Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. I mean, the, the list goes on, bro. Endless. Who? The options are endless. The options are endless. Yeah. It was, just like, was like a running back with uh, wide receiver hands. And it's just like, yeah, of course Brock Purdy's looking good. I mean, because he's got 18 seconds to throw the ball. Yeah. Somebody's going to get open in 18 yeah. seconds, bro. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's but, get back to this Ravens schedule. We've digressed. So, um, the Ravens, yeah. I think we win 12 games. I mean... We've won 12 games with a way shittier roster than so y'all this. should beat the Colts. That's a given. Should beat the Browns. I think so. We should split this year like we split last year. I think so. Uh, the Titans. I'm not scared of the Titans. The I don't Titans think aren't. should be because no, Brian Tannehill is not that guy. No. Not and in- DeAndre Hopkins is a fool. I understand you want your money. But the options for you to possibly go somewhere else. You could go to Buffalo. You could go to uh, Baltimore. Go to Kansas City. You could have went anywhere, but you go to a place where the quarterback has been known not to be great. You got to think about why D-Hop made that. Back at it. Yeah. 
I, I don't know. The Titans just it wouldn't have been my first option. Yeah. I don't care how much money you were throwing at me. I want to win. He he probably missing that money for, you know, PEDs. He was out for, what, the first six. Was he unpaid for those three or four I'm games? I'm not sure. But, you know, I saw a stat that the Titans have a history of having old wide receivers come through. Randy Moss, Andre Johnson. Um, who do they have? Julio Jones. And now they have DeAndre Hopkins. Is Julio even playing anymore? I think he's still a free agent. I think he's still on the free agency. I don't think he has a job. And I don't think he should have a job. Um, it's crazy, though, how the NFL will chew you up and just spit, spit you, out. you out. Like yesterday's garbage. The Lions. It'll be a close one. It's a close one. You actually beat the Cardinals. You actually beat the Seahawks. Beat the Ravens. Split with the Bengals. The Chargers-Ravens game is going to be a really good one. That's when I could be excited to watch. Um, yeah, you're right. He is a free agent. I thought he was. I should beat the Rams. The Jaguars Ravens game last year was good. Y'all should be. That should be another good one. Ravens Niners will be a good one. Ravens Dolphins was a master class last year. Ravens Dolphins. And oh then y'all God. play us. We were the doing year. them so dirty until the second half. They just started playing like their life was on the line. When I say they, they, they I mean we stopped playing defense. We had. If you give Tyreek a chance to run past the secondary, it's over for Yeah. You just got to hope the quarterback can make it that far. Two is not a bum. No not matter what but anybody I'm not, I'm thinks. still not sold on Tua. And maybe that's, I don't want to say me being a casual, but he just, I don't feel like he's shown me enough for me to go ahead and put him on that tier with Trey Lance. I mean, um, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Justin Herbert. Trevor Lawrence. I'm sold on Trevor Lawrence. I'm sold on Tua. That point now that he has Calvin Ridley, he has a legitimate wide receiver one. Christian Kirk's going to give you a thousand yards. Evan Ingram's been known to be a good uh, tight end. Their defense is good. Uh, coaching I really, position. Really, really like, like the Jags, Jags this year. I like the Jags too. The AFC South are going to run the table. Yeah. There's go not a team there the that can bet on Jags. <laughs> go ahead, bet on Jags. If there's yeah. four slots, just go ahead and put your chips on Jags because they're going to win the division, and it probably won't be close. The Texans, the Jags, the Titans, and the Colts? I think so. Yeah. I, I'm sold on Anthony Richardson, too, but Michael Pittman Jr. is not a wide receiver one. He's a wide receiver two. And they got rid of Paris Campbell. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not sold. Anthony Richardson will have an a average year, but they don't have a wide receiver one. Just to go back, back to that, too. Uh, I, I do not like play. Tua. He is just so injury prone, bro. Yeah. And that shouldn't be something we blame on him. When you saw him get smacked, he shouldn't play that next game. Well, even going back to Alabama, Alabama he was hurt yeah. every season. Yeah. yeah. It's rough. I don't know. Quarterback position is not, uh, not a light position anymore. Even though we're still in the, the, the makings of trying to protect the quarterback, it's, it's just hard. When you have guys like Aaron Donald and T.J. Watt and – Let's talk about Calais Campbell in an Atlanta Falcons jersey. There. Why? Why are we talking about it? It just doesn't make sense. I don't know. A staple in your organization for what, 12, 14 years? The Jags did him the same way, though. But he was so. He wanted to retire. He wanted to get paid. If you were. If if Calais is gonna play, you're gonna to have to pay him for his time. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. done everything that a freaking defensive lineman can do. He's been that guy. I mean, like he's still he's top, top 10, ten at like 36, 36 years old, yeah. bro. He's a dog. Dog. When but I saw um, that signing, I was like, even though I hate the Ravens, Al, that hurts because I love playing against Calais Campbell. They give a year. They, it gives David a jabo. A chance to play. And you know they don't play the same position, but it moves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like it, it moves opens the, some space. It opens space, space for David Ajabo. Yeah. You know, coming out of Michigan, he was highly. He was good for y'all last year too. Yeah, he had a he, lot when of he got a good. chance to get some snaps. He but had, I mean, he had a lot of really good plays when he was on the field. He showed that he was worthy. You know, I hate to shift. Who's to the, the college, okay, to the NFC. Who's going to win the NFC? Wow. 
That's such a tough question. It is such a because that because you can look at the them. AFC and you're like ah the Bills, the, the Bengals, Chiefs, the Chiefs, the Bengals. Don't forget the Ravens. Yeah, because we if we win our division, we can win. Let's if we get that first week by. We got to rewind because something we've talked about before, even outside the podcast, is Lamar Jackson is deemed a wide receiver one. He still don't have one. And it just doesn't make any sense. Odell Beckham is not a wide receiver one now, no, ladies and gentlemen. He's fucking injury prone. The dude will play eight games this year. You think so? I hope so. <laughs> For the sake of the Ravens, I hope so. Because I paid him that money knowing damn well that ACL that he has doesn't belong to him. The dude's been injury prone for years now. He's not a wide receiver one, and y'all haven't had one as long Ever. as Lamar Jackson has took the snap. Well, you got to think back. Jacoby Jones? Not a wide receiver one. I mean, even Joe Flacco didn't have a wide receiver one. The Ravens have never had a Pro Bowl receiver. Ever. It doesn't make sense. Ever. And I hate the Ravens, and it just doesn't make sense for organizations. But to... they're predicated on defense and pounding the ball. Yeah. Jamal Lewis was a, was a Pro Bowler. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. And so before we not move on to college, because I'm ready for the college football talk, where is Jonathan Taylor going? Hold on. Let's answer the first question. NFC. The NFC. But because I'm going to be on record. I'm going to be on record. Yeah. <sighs> NFC. I don't know about the NFC. Eagles? The Eagles. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably the Eagles. Or the Niners? We can mark out the Packers. Vikings? No. The Lions? No. The Bears? No. Seahawks? No. Giants? No. Saints? No. I got the Saints being a sleeper. To be I mean, they're a sleeper. They're going to win seven, eight, the nine Rams games. are going to be trash. No. Four wins. No. Falcons, no. No. Commanders? No. They need a quarterback. They need a quarterback. They have – the Commanders have – A sacked ass roster without a quarterback. Facts. Oh, my God. Curtis Samuel could start on any team and be their number one. Yeah. He's a stud. He would be our number one. He's a stud. And that ain't even their best receiver. Yeah. Jahan Dotson, Terry McLaurin, they have a stud at tight end. Logan their, Thomas? Their defense is absolutely – Their whole line – okay, their line – Offensive line is garbage, too. They should have never let Brandon Sheriff leave to go to Jacksonville. Yeah, but their defensive line is crazy. You have 17 players at defensive tackle that can all be someone's defensive tackle one. Deron Allen, Payne, Deron Payne, Payne Allen, yeah. Chase Young. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then they just got Emmanuel Forbes, and he's showing he's Panthers, not scared. No. Buccaneers are going to be trash. No. The Cardinals are going to be trash, and no one can hey, the Cowboys. Okay, I was going to say, the Cowboys are my sleeper. That's, that's my sleeper. I think a one thing that they did that was a smart decision is pick up Brandon Cooks. He is a workhorse that's going to give you a thousand yards under the radar. If Kyle Shanahan doesn't believe in you, no one should. Okay, Trey Lance going to the Cowboys. Cowboy fans can get erect if they want to. It'll be a dysfunctional <laughs> I erect. I saw this stat. Okay, because if Kyle Shanahan, the offensive guru, okay, he's yeah. not Sean McVay, guys. He's not just he's just not some hype job, okay? He's oh, a man, real he's, guy. he's a real offensive guru. Yeah. Sean McVay was just a fucking trend, okay? Yeah. He's not him. He's you not see, him. He had made. one bad season was contemplating retirement, yeah. people. Yeah. And after this year it won't be a contemplation no more. It's gonna, gonna be a to it's gonna be a, yeah, so who the go ahead and sell the house and go ahead and Put Aaron Donald on the trade block. Go ahead and put Cooper Cup on the trade block because Matt Aaron Stafford, Donald doesn't want to play no more. He's he, this will probably be his last year, and you got to shoot shit. If I'm Aaron Donald, out. there's no way I'm putting on a Los Angeles Rams jersey this year. Look, bro, how can you go from so great to so trash so quickly? And let's not go ahead and say, well, they were injured. Cooper Cup. I don't want to hear none of that injury bullshit because every team deals with injuries. It's just something you have to scheme around. The Redskins have never been that bad, and they've never had a quarterback. They haven't had a quarterback in. 30 years, bro. They, if you look at the, the quarterback circulation through the commanders, I'm just going to name a couple off the top of my head. You had old injured Alex Smith. You had Robert Griffin III that you ran into the dirt and broke Carson his fucking Wentz. legs. Carson Wentz. Taylor Heineke, who fucking held your organization down. Together. And then what did you do? You, you shipped him, him off to Atlanta? You let him go. Why would you do that? The guy, the guy that you have in and the guy that could have been his mentor played the same 
style of football. You could have let Taylor Heineke mentor Sam Howe until Sam Howe was ready. But he's Taylor not ready. Heineke, he was like, oh, thanks for doing all that shit you did for him. <laughs> but you can go ahead and play for Atlanta and be a backup. Right. He's better than Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter's just fast. I feel bad for Commanders fans. Craig's a Commanders fan, and my friend Matt's a Commanders fan. And we talking, I'm just like, dude, they well, don't care. Um, hot take, or, you know, I used to be a Redskins fan when they were the Redskins, first of all. I'm talking Sean Taylor all Redskins. Right. I'm talking about Sean Taylor Redskins. I'm talking about D'Angelo Hall Redskins. Bro, uh, whoever, they're the Commanders now, and Dan Schneider ran them into the dirt. You can pause it. Glad I was recording. I just fell out of my chair. Um, the Eagles were the Niners to win the NFC. Yep. And we already know the top four to finish in the AFC. Yep. I, okay, so I'm going to call it right now. Super Bowl. I got the 49ers. God, that hurts so bad to say. I don't think they can make it without a quarterback, but I can't pick the Eagles again to go back to back. You know what I'm saying? And then they lost some depth. Too. So I got the 49ers. And... Damn. A lot of teams lost the a lot of The Bengals. Ooh, they lost a lot of depth. Losing Jesse Bates is going to hurt them in the long run. They did lose Jesse Bates Atlanta. to the Falcons. The Falcons might be a uh, not sleeper to be really good, but a sleeper to, to be a, a When your quarterback isn't great, you won't win. That's why I brought Purdy. That's why. Well, they have uh, Bijan. They have oh, God. Cordell Patterson, Tyler Allegier. I changed my mind. The Eagles. I'm taking the Eagles because to be to, to no one you have to have a great quarterback to make it. And you have to. Proven. You have to. And Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback in the NFC by a long shot. Yeah, he's got Dak Prescott beat by like yeah. seven tiers. But all right, college football. College football. Just to let you know, I am a casual Hokies fan, and we ran up the score on Old Dominion on Saturday. Did we? Yes, we did. Oh, we, we lost to them the year before, so that was a little they, payback. They beat the dog shit out of them. It was like fumble, interception, sack, What was sack, the score? Uh, 35 to uh, 14. Good. Let me see. Fuck Old Dominion. But we're not here to talk about that. What we're here to talk about is Shador Sanders. 36 to 17. Shador Sanders for Heisman. 510 yards, which should have been 700 if he didn't miss two go routes. That he didn't miss. The receivers missed it, okay? The game was disgusting. It was just like, here, you can score. Now you can score. Now you can score. Now, now the only reason score. why I don't have Colorado in my college football playoffs because the defense. And every Colorado, uh, every college football playoff team has had a stacked defense. Georgia, they couldn't mom. stop a cold if they had Mucinex, okay? If you're scoring that much and letting TCU run the ball, uh, the score up on you, just imagine what some powerhouse teams, teams are going to do. Like Caleb Williams and them boys. Yeah. What does the rest of their schedule look like? They got they got Nebraska Coming next week, soon, yeah, and then they got Colorado State. They're going to start the season five and one. I have them so losing. Nebraska, I have them losing State. against L- L- uh, USC. I have them losing against Oregon. But I'm Bo Nix. Bo Nix is all right. Super Oregon fan. But that's They're the definitely the, lose to USC. But that's the thing about about um. What about Arizona State? They're going to beat the shit out of Arizona Stanford. State. Arizona State just lost by like 60, didn't they? UCLA, Oregon State, that's going to be a good one. Arizona, Washington State, and then they play Utah to end the season. Well, as long as Cam Risen's healthy, the Utah Utes have a good job, have a good chance of winning. But Does my school have a, a football team? No, we have a basketball team, and we made the damn Who? Uh, Grand Canyon. We made the freaking... Who's your college? I go to Grand Canyon. Do they have a football team? No. Grand Canyon's a city? Uh, Arizona? Oh, no, we just have a bas- basketball team. Do y'all? Yeah, we played Gonzaga in the um champion in the... The first 16, they yep. did y'all dirty. Yeah, we weren't expected to be there. We were Cinderella. Sure. Um, Travis Hunter. Played both sides of the ball. <laughs> Oh my God! And that interception was outrageous. You bro, that, that Deion Sanders is his coach. Trayvon Diggs type shit, bro. That man was stretched out and got the ball. 
Trayvon Diggs used to play receiver, and it helped him a lot transition in the cornerback because he has the route tree in his mind. So if you break one way, he has a pretty good chance. Of, he has a pretty good going. idea of where you're going, and he can sometimes jump and break that route. And, and he has you've the seen to Travis it. Hunter. He knew that if you didn't go inside, you were going outside because Travis Hunter broke inside, and then in a blink of a second, he shifts his body and like a madman. Oh my god! I was like, "What is going on here?" Just absolutely phenomenal. That game was great. Like and Deion want... Sanders is going stop to show the him. country. Stop hating on him. Yeah, stop hating him because you're used to the Kirby Smarts and the Nick Sabins and the uh, guys who play traditional and these traditional. guys who does this. Traditional cut. We coming. Yeah. Okay. They're coming. Deion Sanders just putting us on the map. And you know what I'm saying? There's going to be a lot of more. There's going to be a lot more black coaches because the swagger is something that's undeniable. And that one female reporter who was giving Deion Sanders shit about him not claiming to be a Seminole, even though that was the alumni that he started with. He wanted that job, by the way. They didn't give it to him. They gave it to Norville, which he did a fantastic job last night. Shout out to Florida State. If he wants to throw LSU. shade at them because he wanted that job and they didn't give it to him, and he wants to claim the alumni of the school that he graduated from. Where did he graduate? Um, I think he's did he go to Miami? Or is it Florida? Was he a Gator? No, he was not no Gator. Um, I knew he was a Seminole, but he didn't graduate, though. Um, I, think I, I think he did go to Florida. Why does he say? I don't know. But he didn't. He doesn't want to claim to be a Seminole. I went to multiple different colleges, but once I graduate from Grand Canyon, I will be uh, a lope, and that will be the alumni that I claim. Not none of those other schools I started with, because that's the school I graduated from. But stop hating on Deion Sanders because he's not what y'all want to see on TV. Facts. The dude's out there changing football. He changing lives. Jackson First State. of all, he's changing lives it has nothing to do with football. He showed y'all what he could do in Jackson State, and y'all said, "Oh, he couldn't do it at a big school." And then he goes to Colorado, brings everybody that wants to play for Deion Sanders through the portal to Colorado, put his son at the starting quarterback position, saying, "Oh, he shouldn't be a starting quarterback," and dude threw for. Five hundred fucking yards. <laughs> five hundred yards. What, easy. what more do you guys want from the guy? What more? Five hundred and ten yards. What do you have? Four touchdowns. Four tutties. Four tutties. He should have had six tutties. But like the I said, those two go out hands. Yeah. Yeah. He only got the starting position because he's the coach's son. No. Five hundred yards. Five hundred yards. Against the national champion runner-up, by the way, it wasn't against a, a team. It wasn't against was national who USC ranked. played against San Jose State. Nationally ranked. They didn't play San Jose State, bro. They played a nationally ranked championship runner-up. They're throwing dimes like he had a pocket full of change. Facts. Shout out to the Colorado Buffaloes. Yeah, I sure. think that this is the worst they're ever going to look. I think against TCU was the worst they're going to look all season. They're only going to get steady. better. Up, up, and up, after up, this up. year, just it was a recruiting uh, job that they did last week. Or, you know, when they played against TCU. Yeah. Everybody who wants to be somebody, who wants that swagginess on there. If you can play, you can play. It doesn't matter what school you went to beforehand. Hey, look, bro. Dion's going to be bringing in a lot of players next year, too. Watch the transfer portal. That Watch it. It's going to be packed. Watch it. You know, the your favorite college receiver on your favorite team right now might Just not be on your Colorado favorite. Colorado underneath his name on the Yeah, stack. I mean, there's a lot of chance that, you know, he could go to Colorado. Because he's going to get these guys – not only ready for the real world, but he's prepping these guys for the big leagues. Because you're not talking about a guy that just played in the NFL. You're talking about a motherfucker that went to the fucking Major League Baseball. World Series. And he was in the World Series in the playoffs in the same day. We've only seen that happen twice. And you know, if you only see it happen twice, it's not an anomaly. It's called SPACs. Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders played professional, professional level Football and baseball at the same time. There's only a certain uh, there's only a certain type of person who can do that, and that's the thing. A lot of people was like, my bad. A lot of people was like, oh, how is prime time gonna put up uh, with when the lights are bright, and how is he gonna when he's playing? 
Do you know who you're talking? You're talking about a guy nicknamed Prime Time. He is not new to the lights. He's not new to the talk. He's not new to the, the media. Defensive back of all time. He, I mean, Ron, you got Ronnie Lott, you got Deion Sanders, you got, I mean, it's a really short list. Darrell Revis, guys who have names for the, the position they play, because you know, when Revis was playing, what was they calling it? Revis Island. Island. Yeah. Because once he got on you, it was just you and him and nobody else. Throw the ball over there if you want to. It's either going to be a pick or he's going to swap that down. shit down. Yeah, facts. There's only a certain group of guys that you can consider the best defensive backs of all time. And at the top of that, Mount Rushmore, Who's up there? Prime time. The lights hit those diamonds real nice. Mm, mm, mm. He said it, he said it pretty good. Darrell Revis is one of those players who he's the exact opposite of what uh, Deion Sanders is. He gets on the because Deion Sanders, yeah. Before he gets on the field, you'll know Deion Sanders. Like you're gonna know him from the time that you lay your eyes on him. You're gonna talk about him. But Darrell oh, Revis was sleep. one of those play- the pillow and you're like, oh. Darrell Revis was one of those players that only talked when he got on the field. Like yeah. you don't even know what his voice sounded like because he just kept his mouth shut yeah. and he, he let produced. The game speak for itself. You know, sometimes you sometimes you gotta leave the Jets and go to the Patriots to get you a ring. He deserved yeah. it. Yeah, deserved it. Shout out to Daryl yeah. Revis, the yeah, Hall of Fame. Doesn't really get enough respect. Yeah, he got inducted to the Hall of Fame this year, though. Round of applause for him. Yeah, him and the VA native Rondé Barber. Shout out to Rondé hey, Barber. Shout out Virginia. Um, yeah, we've man. had some we've had some people come out of VA. Damn y'all, right, y'all better stop sleeping on VA like we don't produce. No, we produce we the produce. greatest football player of all time. A lot of people people will say it was Tom Brady, but before then they would call Lawrence Taylor the greatest football player of all time. Virginia product. Yep. Okay, so I mean, and before we had Lamar Jackson, there was this young black kid that came out of facts. VA that was putting the world on the map. He went from Atlanta to Philadelphia. And y'all know who we talk about. Yeah, Michael Vick, that Michael guy. Michael Vick, that He's guy. the man. He was the man. He's the running black quarterback that paved the way. I know a lot of y'all going to say, what about Randall Cunningham? Yeah, I knew he, he was going to say that. He didn't have the fucking swag. He didn't have the spotlight that Mike Vick had. And he ran because he had to, though. The Eagles line was trash. And he, who was he throwing the ball to? Deshaun Jackson. And if you don't have enough time to wait for Deshaun Jackson to get 80 yards down the field, you're going to have to make something happen for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Shout out to Deshaun Jackson. Shout out Virginia. Shout out Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, shout out Deshaun. But yeah, VA, we on the mat. We've produced. You know someone who speaks crazy? Who is that? You watch uh, No Chill Gill? You talk about Rashawn McCants, bro. I cannot stand him. Christ. He said Greg Popovich isn't a great coach because of the people he's coached or uh, coached. Now, explain to me exactly how the fuck that makes any sense. Just because you have Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan played basketball for two years before he met Popovich. Mono Ginobili, Tony Parker, David Robinson. Doesn't mean that you're not a great coach. You can't just roll the ball out there in 1990 to the early 2000s and say, Go hoop. It's not the Golden State Warriors, even though people say Steve Kerr is not a coach. Steve Kerr coached that Warriors team. Tim Duncan was recruited to play basketball whenever he went to Wake Forest during the summer just to play basketball, just to hoop, because he was a swimmer. He yeah. swam in the Virgin Islands. Yeah. Okay? He went on a summer break one time to North Carolina. Because they have a lot of water, if you didn't know. Yeah. So he was just chilling out there. Went to a pickup game where he got recruited. And they said, like, hey, you should come down here and try out for Wake Forest. And the rest is history. Yeah. The man that only Great played basketball for two years before he met Greg Popovich. He played one year at Wake Forest. Played two years at Wake Forest. Then he left. And he got drafted. And he got drafted not, not number three, not number four, number one. And then they go on to <laughs> go on to win championships in the Then his second the year, he won a championship. Oh, but he had David Robinson. Man, stop. David, David Robinson, Robinson was, was 75 old. years old. Dude was 98 years old when that happened. <laughs> Golly. I mean, some people are so casual that they can't understand how to accept greatness unless if it slapped them in their face. My mom used to say, go find such and such. And if I didn't see it, if it was a snake, it would have bit you. You guys, if a greatness was a snake, it would have bit you. Because <laughs> you, you want to be... undermine these great players so bad. And I just don't. I, I, I'll, I'll never understand why. I spent a lot of time, you know, disputing Tom Brady's greatness. You got Spygate. You got Deflategate. You got... He lost to Eli twice. You know, you got all this. But one thing, when the time was right and the lights were bright, that man produced it. Yeah. 
That's when we had Randy Moss. Bro, he is a great for like quarterback, yards. and I just didn't want to be one of those guys that was like, oh, my God, I wish I would have spent way more time appreciating the greatness that is Tom Brady. And that so we just appreciate on greatness while it's happening. Yeah. That's why we were already giving Patrick Mahomes his flowers because the guy's already chiseled his name to be at that top one, and he's tied for one. It's just that simple. What is he, 28, 29? He'll be 28 in this season, yeah. Guy's the same age as I am. And he's got jewelry. Jewelry. I'm not going to spam on the Bengals, but Jamar Chase knew he was wrong when Joe Burrow said that Patrick Mahomes was still the best quarterback in the league, and Jamar said, Pat who? What did, what did, what did Kadarius Tony say? Pat Mahomes. Look, look at the jewelry. MVPs. The guy had Travis Kelsey as his number one wide receiver, and he threw the ball out there with a bunch of guys that I work with. <laughs> All he needs, you give him a above average defense, and Travis Kelsey and me, and my brother, and our sons, and we're going to the Super Bowl. I mean, that arm pat in the Super Bowl hit the receiver in his face mask. <laughs> <laughs> he did, didn't he? On his way yeah, down. On his way down. Mm. And I know people will say he probably took some PEDs or steroids because there should have been no reason he came back. After halftime, that healthy after taking that uh, tackle on his ankle. When greatness is great, there's nothing else you need. Yeah, yeah bro. You can't stop somebody from being great when they have it in the back of their mind already. Yeah. Like, Patrick Mahomes is one of one. Like, it's your Pat, it's Patrick Mahomes and then everybody else. Yeah. And I'm a it's, Ravens fan. It's tier Patrick Mahomes and then, and then everybody, everybody else. Tier Travis Kelsey. And then it's just the rest of everybody else. Mark Andrews goes second because George Kittle has fell off. Don't at me. Yeah, fast. Mark Andrews is next. TJ Hawkinson is after Andrews because Kittle has fell off. And then on the other side, you got Pat. That next year is Joe. I don't, know, I don't, I don't agree with the TJ Hawkinson guys. Watch but... TJ Hawkinson show out this year for the Chargers. Hawkinson. You got Josh Allen, Burrow, Lamar, and then everybody else. But that will be the rest of the show. I appreciate you guys. Thank you to my guest. I will see you in the next one. Peace.